Yo, what's going on guys? Janet Yumiko here, and today we're back with some more Everlasting Summer. So, last episode, we we strangely ended up in a Soviet-era pioneer camp. And we're trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. That's about, that's about all that's happened so far. We're still on day one. We've met a couple of girls. And right now, we're trying to figure out where the fuck we are. Passing the local residential district, I saw a pioneer guy coming my way. And it was really a pioneer guy. Not a pioneer girl. Apparently there were even men in this kingdom of Amazons. Hello, you're new here. You must be Simeon, right? And how do you... Everyone knows already. I'm Electronic, by the way. The real one, you can call me that. Electronic, the real one. Things were going from crazy to completely insane. Let's see. Electronic was a robot character appearing in popular Soviet film and book series. He looked like an exact copy of a school kid called Sergei Chizikov. Alright. Oh, Yana also calls me cheesy. Cheesy? On toast with mushrooms? <laughs> because my last name is Chizikov. I see. Let me show you around. I accepted his offer, as it would would have taken much longer to get to know this place. Fine, let's go. We ended up at the square again, as if this place was all there is to this camp. Lena was sitting on one of the benches, reading some book. Electronic confidently approached her. Hey Lena, meet the new guy, Simeon. He started briskly. Hello. Well, you could say we've already met, in a way. Yes. How did I do her voice last time? Ah, I'll have to figure it out later. She looked away from the book for a moment, glanced at me, blushed, and went back to reading, as if not noticing that we were still there. Alright, let's go on. I was at first surprised that meeting this girl was reduced to a couple of words, but then I thought that it was better this way. Electronics' vigorous activity did not fit well with Lena's shyness. Let's go. Next, we came to a building, which I instantly identified as a canteen. And this is where, I know, this is where you consume organic food. Yeah, something like that. On the canteen's porch stood the unfriendly girl who hit me on the back earlier. At the sight of, my, at the sight of her, my joking mood vanished in the blink of an eye. Really, now is not the best time to be pulling this guy's leg, even though he is quite hilarious. First, I need to figure out what's what here. Or at least where I am. Hey, over there. That's Elisa. What the fuck? Dvajik. Dvachevskaya? Elisa. Elisa Dvachevskaya? I think the D is sort of melded with the V, so it'd be like. Dva. Dvachevskaya. Be careful around her. He spoke in a whisper. Don't ever risk calling her Dvacha. Dvacha. She doesn't like that. Dva means two in Russian. The whole nickname sounds exactly like two ch in Russian. A reference to the late two ch dot ru anonymous image board. I'm guessing that's something that's not good. What did you say? What did you call me? She must have heard him. In the blink of an eye, Alice had jumped down from the porch and dashed towards us. All right, you'll manage from here onwards. Electronic took to his heels. Let's do nothing. Elisa, running past, stopped for a moment and growled. I'll deal with you later. Deal with me? What did I do wrong? I added a forced guilty smile to my words. What am I guilty of? She made no reply and carried on chasing Electronic. Looks like I'll have time to kill. Waiting for dinner. I decided to go east. At least in the direction where east would be in my world. Soon after, I found myself near a football pitch. The game was in full swing there. I guess watching it for a bit wouldn't do any harm. In my childhood and teen years, I was not a bad player myself. I even thought of going professional. But a few injuries in a row killed my desire to risk my health for the sake of uncertain chance in the game. 
Kids of different ages were running around the pitch. I could see a boy of about 10 and a girl of about 14 years old. A girl. Hey, that's Ilyana. Alright, so she plays football. What's so surprising? She seems a restless one after all. I was standing quite far from the pitch, but she still noticed me. Hey you! Liana shouted. Wanna play? I didn't know how to answer. On the one hand, running around for 10 minutes is no big deal. On the other hand, any wrong move in my situation could be my final one. But in any case, my attire wasn't suitable for this weather. If I played in winter boots and warm jeans, I would sweat like a pig. And playing barefoot and without jeans would be simply unethical. Maybe another time, alright? I shouted in response, turned around, and walked back. I was followed by Ilyana's screams about my pants, or about me being a pansy, something like that. Evening was falling, making me tired and empty after a day wasted with no real purpose. I came back to the square, sat down on a bench, and gave an exhausted sigh. It's better sit here and wait for dinner. After all, it's easier to search for answers when you're not hungry. They do give food to the people here, right? You know, it's curious how the simplest human needs how the simplest uh, how the simplest human needs can break the will to ponder on things, to strive for something. For example, I feel hungry now, so I could care much less about where I am or what's happening to me. Could great people also be affected by this? And in that case, how did Spartacus start the slave uprising in ancient times? I can only conclude that I am not a great person, and it doesn't really matter which mechanism I serve as a gear in, society, the matrix, or a weird pioneer camp. My thoughts were interrupted by the sound of bells chiming from a loudspeaker on the light pole. It must be the dinner call. I headed towards the canteen. It was a good thing that I knew where it was. Olga Dmitrievna was there, standing on the porch. I stopped and looked closely at, at her, as if I were expecting something. She looked back at me for a while, but at last came closer. Semyon, what are you waiting for? Come in already. Guess nothing bad can happen if I go with her. I apologize if, like, I'm doing, like, different voices for these characters. Like, in each episode, I just I just don't really remember what I did for, like, the specific voices that I did for them. I'll probably, I'll get, I'll get more of a grasp on it over time, though. My stomach backed me up to you. Uh, ugh, my stomach backed me up here. <laughs> The two of us went inside. The canteen looked like... A canteen. <laughs> really, that's crazy. Let's see. Uh... <laughs> that dude back there, good fucking lord. I would imagine that at least some of these characters are like... References or something, right? Oh yeah, like come on, like... She looks like, uh, the fucking girl from Monogatari, like the first one. Oh, I forget her name. I don't know her name, but that looks like Monogatari to me. What's that one? Maybe, like, like, Kaon or maybe something like that? I don't know. Because I know that they have a character in this game that looks, that well, they are Miku, essentially. Okay, so, let's move on. I would had a chance to visit a factory canteen at some point in my life. This one was exactly the same just maybe a bit cleaner and more modern. Metal chairs and tables, glazed tiles on the walls and on the floor, unsophisticated tableware with the occasional crack. Guess that's what a canteen in a pike near camp is supposed to look like. Semyon, wait a moment. We'll find you a place to sit. She looked around the place. Dvachevskaya? Dvachevskaya? Hold it right there! Olga Dmitrievna shouted at Alyssa, who was passing by. What? What's up with your clothes? Anything wrong with them? Indeed, her attire looks somewhat provocative. Get your uniform nice and neat right now! Alright, alright. Elisa got her shirt right and walked past, shooting an unpleasant glare at me. So, where can we find you a place to sit? There weren't a lot of free seats. I'll go over there, next to Ulyana. Um, maybe I... Yeah, it's fine. The food's already on the table, too. I had no other choice but to accept. Of course, there was the probability that the cutlets were poisoned by the Carrere, the mashed potatoes generously seasoned with arsenic, and the glass filled with excellent antifreeze instead of crumped. Wait, I wanna, what, was the, what was the prompt there? 
Oh, you can actually like oh, so you can actually go back like that. I did not know that. Huh. Okay, in common Russian language, cutleta cutlet is minced meat, fried or blah 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 blah. Uh close to American values. Oh, so it's just saying what a cutlet is. But it all looked so tasty that I had no chance to resist. Hey! What do you want? I replied, I replied rather rudely to Ilyana, who was sitting next to me. Why don't you play football with us? Because of my clothes, said I. I said, I'm going to say, pointing at the source of the problem. Oh, all right then. Eat. However, there wasn't much left to eat. My cutlet was, was missing from my plate. Only she could have done it. No, more precisely, none but Ilyana could have done it. Give me back my cutlet. In a big family, you snooze, you lose. It can cost you a cutlet if you're careless. Give it back, I'm telling you. Attempt to take the cutlet. Give me back the fucking cutlet. I looked at her menacingly and was about to reach out my hand. See, I don't have it. And indeed, Ileana's plate was empty. It seemed this little girl eats, faster as, eats as fast as she steals someone's cutlet. Take it easy, we'll work something out now. She grabbed my plate and ran off. There was no point in following her. If they wanted to poison me here, they could have done it in a much easier way. About a minute later, Ilyana returned and handed me the plate with a steaming hot cutlet on it. Here's one for the starving! Thanks. It was all I could say. I was so hungry that my suspicions were gone in a flash. I picked up the cutlet with my fork and... What the? Some bug? No, not a bug. An insect? It got legs and it's wiggling. The plate fell to the floor and broke into pieces. The chair hit me hard on my leg while falling. I've disliked insects since I was a child. But when those creepy crawlies appear in my plate, that's just way too much. You little... Oliana seems ready for such a twist and was already at the door, laughing as if she had just heard a fresh stand-up comedy joke. I dashed after her. We ran out of the canteen. We were just a few dozen meters apart. And I felt like I could, ca I could catch this little girl easily. When we ran through the square, past the club's house, and ran onto the forest path, I started to gasp for breath. I should have quit smoking, I guess. Oliana passed out of sight on the next turn. It can't be true that she managed to get away from me. It simply can't. I stopped and tried to catch my breath again. Night was falling. Looks like I'm lost. It's a bad idea to stay in the woods at night, try to get back to camp. However, I had absolutely no clue which way to go. Well, gotta choose at random. <laughs> I wandered for quite some time in the forest and even thought of crying out for help, but I finally saw the camp's fence beyond the trees. Everything fell back into place. The bus is gone, I mumbled quietly. On the one hand, there was nothing strange about that. The bus couldn't just stay there forever. On the other hand, it meant there was someone driving, because buses do not drive themselves. Or do they? This world seemed too normal, but every event here had at least two explanations for it. An ordinary, real, everyday explanation, and a surreal one. Certainly, the driver could have just been off for a snack, and I left too soon. And that's why. In any case, this is not the place for me. Whether that bus drives it itself or not was probably an important question, but it was much more important to know how I had gotten here at all, and where this here was. The fields in the woods, stretching towards the horizon, had no answers. There was nothing familiar about them. A strange, odd, and alien world. However, at the same time, it was absolutely not frightening. Either my self-preservation inst instinct decided to resign from its job, or all this running around the camp and the local pioneers had lulled me so much with their carefree normality that I was simply forgetting what had happened to me just a couple of hours ago. Although I probably just had no strength left to worry. All I wanted was some peace, calmness. I wanted to just have a break from it all, and only after that would I continue looking for answers, ready and reloaded. However, that would be some time later. What about now? Can I allow myself to relax? It got completely dark. 
and in any case, it was better to spend the night in the camp. I was about to head back when someone came up silently from behind. Hello, what are you doing here so late? It was Slavia standing next, standing before me. I was so surprised that I jumped. So, you didn't catch Liana, did you? She smiled. I nodded disappointingly inside. No wonder. No one ever has. Yeah, she's a real rocket girl. She could have been... She could have found a better use for her energy than looking for adventures. You must be hungry. You didn't manage to have dinner at all. Indeed, I had completely forgotten about my hunger. But after these words of hers, my stomach drew attention to itself by giving a treacherous rumble. Slavia smiled. Let's go then. What? Is the canteen is the canteen still open? It's alright. I have the keys. The keys? Yes, I have the keys to all the facilities in the camp. How come? Well, I'm something like the camp leader's aide here. I see. Well, let's go. It was an offer you can't refuse. When we reached the square, Slavia stopped in her tracks. Excuse me, I should warn my roommate that I'll be late. She's so punctual herself that she'll be worried otherwise. You go into the canteen, and I'll come in a minute, right? All right. I really did not expect to find someone aside from myself there at such a late hour. And that someone was apparently trying to hopeless was apparently trying hopelessly to open the door. Without any secret thoughts, I walked up onto the porch. The lock picker turned out to be Alyssa. I should have probably kept off and waited. She looked at me intently for a while, then she said, Don't just stand there. Give me a hand or something. Meaning Help me open the door. Why? Cause I want some buns and kefir. Dinner wasn't big enough. Um is that really a good idea? Aren't you hungry yourself? Ugh. Aren't you hungry yourself? Huh? Oliana didn't let you have a normal dinner, did she? She smiled sarcastically. It's true, she didn't. It's fine, Slavia will come now and... What? Guess I shouldn't have said that. I'm off then. And you'll pay for this. You owe me two already. Having said that, Alyssa disappeared into the night. And what was the first one? Slavia didn't keep me waiting for too long. Is everything alright? Yeah, why are you asking? No reason, it's nothing. It would be better if I didn't tell her about Alyssa. Everything's fine. I said that and immediately heard a note of dishonesty in my voice. Well, shall we go? As for Slavia, she seemed to have not, she seemed not to have noticed anything. Or at least she was pretending she didn't. We entered the canteen. Wait a bit, I'll go get something. I sat down on a chair and obediently waited for my savior. My dinner was simple, a few buns and a glass of kefir. No wonder, I bet Hungry Pioneers finished everything off. However, even that was far better than most of my usual diet. Slavia sat across the table and looked at me while I was eating. Is there something on my face? No, just... She smiled. So, how did you like your first day in the camp? Well, I don't really know. It's silly to ask someone who suddenly found himself in a different reality whether he liked the food in the canteen, the camp leader, or his assigned hut. It's alright, you'll get used to it soon. Slavia stared out the window dreamily. Frankly speaking, I have no desire to get used to such things. But as for her, she doesn't know. Or at least she wants me to think that she doesn't. Well, all in all, it's nice here. I had to somehow break the awkward silence. Do you think so? She asked without any interest. Yeah, this place is so... I wanted to say retro, but I managed to hold that back. After all, it was retro for me. But what about them? It might be the only kind of life they knew. If the term life was applicable here at all. So how? She watched me closely as if something important depended on my answer. Well, I don't know. Lovely. Yeah, it is lovely here. I guess you're right. She smiled again. It's very good that you think so. Why? Well, not everybody likes it here. And what about you? Me? Yeah. I love it here. It's great. Then you don't need to worry about what other people think. Well, I don't really worry. Slavia laughed. 
This conversation, conversation seemed to be leading me far astray from where I wanted to go. And you're worried yourself. Really? Why do you say so? Well, when someone's chewing so intently... I'm sorry. It's okay. I couldn't bring myself to be more cautious around this girl. But why her in particular? Why not another, any other local inhabitant? Every one of them looked completely normal to me. Precisely normal. So normal it sends chills down my spine and into my marrow. Normal. Not like a neighbor with a power drill in one hand and a subwoofer in the other. Not like a passenger you can often meet in a subway or on public transport. Not like a co-worker at the next table in an open plan office. And not even like a friend who only differs from other humans in his constant incidents. All of them looked normal, as I would expect them to be, with their own downsides but without any superpowers. And Slavia was also... cute? I glanced at her stealthily, not knowing what to say. I'm sorry, I wanted to show you around the camp before... Oh, I wanted to show you around the camp but was ran off my feet. I didn't miss anything well on my own, I guess. Are you sure you haven't missed anything at all? She smiled so brightly that I had to drop my eyes in confusion. Well, how would I know? It's my first day here. Okay, and what have you seen so far? I've seen the square, this canteen, the football field, and what about the beach? Just from, ugh, just from afar. You really should go there, or let's do it together. Yeah, okay, we will. Her naturalness started to scare me, but then I thought, what if everything that happens here is how it's supposed to be, and this world looks strange only to me? Well, for them, it's... normal? Maybe I was thrown into the past. Yeah, that would explain a lot. Can I ask a stupid question? No. Slavi smiled and stood up from the table. It's late. Can you find your way to Ol Olga Dmitrievna's by yourself? Of course I can, but why should I go there? She'll settle you she'll settle you with someone. What for? Probably this question seems stupid because Slavia burst into good natured laughter. You need somewhere to sleep, right? That makes sense. Fine, I'll be off then. Good night. Night. It's strange that she left in such a hurry. A bundle of keys left in the door in ugh, left in the door lock caught my attention. I was going to catch up to Slavia, but where does she live? <sighs> and knocking on every door in the middle of the night doesn't sound like a bright idea. I'll take the keys. I better take them. I'll give them back tomorrow because who knows what happens here at night. Such thoughts gave me chills. It's me who needs to be careful in the first place. The night, though dark, wasn't silent at all. One could hear chirping crickets, the songs of the night birds and rustling trees from everywhere. A sudden desire to follow Slavi's advice and go to the camp leader's cabin appeared. I don't know why, but the sight of the unknown bronze spilder of communism put me in a constructive mood. I sat on the bench and started to recall everything that happened today. That was all my constructive mood could offer. There wasn't much... Here wasn't much brighter than the canteen, and, and tardy pioneers were running by, so this place didn't seem scary at all. But summer... Ugh. Bus, summer camp, girls. I was so tired from everything new and strange that I could not come up with a single explanation for what was going on. I heard a barely noticeable rustle nearby. I shivered and looked in that direction. A girl, reading a book. Lena. I decided to move closer and talk. She was the only new person I had met here without exchanging even a few words. Hi, what are you reading? Lena was so surprised that she even jumped. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Never mind. She blushed and stared at the book again. So, what are you reading? On the cover was written, Gone with the Wind. Praise the book or keep silent. <sighs> I've never read Gone with the Wind. But let's I'm try let's try to initiate a conversation. Let's praise it. A good book. Thanks. 
I don't know what I should do for a voice. Honestly speaking, I haven't read it, but I think that such uh, but I think that such literature suits her very well. Lana didn't seem to be interested in continuing the conversation. Well, if I'm bothering you. No. She answered while still looking at the book. Can I sit beside you for a while? Why? And really, why? Maybe just because I was very tired and having company is better than being alone. And maybe I wanted to try to find something out from her. I carefully examined Lena. But no, I doubt that. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I'm not allowed to? Feel free. But if I'm bothering you... No, you're not. I can leave. Just say, everything's alright. Okay then. I sat on the end of the bench carefully. After such an intense talk, staying here was the last thing I wanted. But it wouldn't be nice to just stand up and leave. That didn't really go well, huh? Lena hasn't answered anything. It seems I made a f it seems I made a fool out of myself. I bet if Oliana was here right now, she'd give a good laugh at me. Do you enjoy being here? I recalled the Slavia's question and thought it would be a good start for conversation. Yes. She smiled slightly. Slightly. I guess I like it too. Lena definitely isn't very sociable and probably can't carry on a meaningless conversation as easily well, as easily as Slavia. But there was something about her that attracted attention. Like a momentary glimpse of a reflection in the glass on a rainy autumn evening, which makes you turn around and stare into darkness, searching for something that you saw out of the corner of your eye. Of course, you weren't able to distinguish or understand what it was, but it felt so tempting. Lena was still reading the book without paying any attention to my presence, and I had no intention of asking her about this camp or this world in general. Beautiful night. Yes. How in the world would you start a conversation with her? It's late. I have to go. Yes, it's quite late. Good night. Night. There was something strange about this girl. At first glance, she isn't a typically shy and modest pioneer girl. Oh, she is a typically shy and modest pioneer girl. But the mystery of Lena took its own place in the massive list of mysteries about this camp, which I had started to put together in my head. A lazy evening, there's nothing like a good time with nothing to do. I headed toward, towards Olga Dmitrievna's cabin. The light in the house was on. Hello, Simeon. You're quite late. Yeah. I went for a walk to look around the camp. Alright. You'll be sleeping here. She pointed her finger at one of the beds. Right here? I was a bit surprised. Yeah, is something wrong? We're out of free cabins, anyway. The camp leader smiled, but I rather think it was just out of politeness. You do want to be a decent pioneer, don't you? There was a clear emphasis on the word decent. Yep, sure. I was lost in thought for a moment. Don't you mind it? Ah, oh, don't you mind it, mademoiselle? She looked at me oddly, with surprise and some offense in her eyes. A pioneer should respect their elders. Olga Dmitrievna said strictly. Of course he should. No one argues that. I blathered, not realizing what was wrong. Shouldn't you also... She stared at me. Under such a gaze, even Mithril forged by the best dwarf masters from the deepest dungeons would melt. Should I what? What's up, toots? <laughs> Annoyance and a lack of understanding made me raise my voice. You must address adults appropriately. Yes. Of course, there are a lot of strange things here, but this girl is just a couple years older than me, or maybe even younger. But I decided not to argue. Well, just a few minutes ago, I would have never called her an adult. I have to admit that she was also given a strong character. And in any case, I wasn't in a position to argue. As you say, ma'am, I mumbled. That's much better. That is how a decent pioneer should conduct himself. And now it's time to sleep. Honestly speaking, I was going to become neither a decent nor an indecent pioneer. Just yesterday, I wasn't going to become a pioneer at all. But do I have a choice now? If you don't want to, we'll have to make you. This is the motto Olga Dmitrievna was probably going to use. 
I climbed under the bed and closed my eyes, only to realize how tired I was after today. Something hammered in my head awfully, as if my brains had started a, sh ah, had started a night shift, and they seemed to be aimed more at rolling steel than working on something more sensitive. The bus flew through my mind, and the square with the monument, the canteen full of pioneers, and the malicious face of Ulyana. Slavia, Lena, and every recalling Alyssa didn't give me too much of an oh, and even recalling Alyssa didn't give me too much of a negative feeling. What if I'm here for good? Day <laughs> two. I was having a dream. It seemed like I was in some kind of vacuum, with nothing but nothing around me. But not only around, I was the only creature in the universe. As if the universe had returned to a state of singularity right before the Big Bang. And something was just about to happen. Suddenly I heard a voice. I could not make out the words, but it sounded familiar. The voice was whispering something gently, as if soothing me. And then I realized... It was the voice of that strange girl from the bus. The girl from the dream. But why? But what is she trying to tell me? Who is she? I woke up. Bright sunlight struck my eyes. It was almost noon. After stretching lazily on the bed and yawning, I started to recall the previous day. In a few seconds, all its events passed before my eyes. The bus, the camp, the local inhabitants. No, that's just wrong. Not this whole situation. Not being me not me being here. It was wrong by default. My attitude towards what was happening was wrong. Because yesterday I fell asleep here just like that. And before that I chattily I chatted nicely with the local pioneers. Even managed to crack uh, even managed to crack a few jokes. How could I act like that in this situation? I should be frightened, startled by every little rustling. Should avoid all contact with the potentially hostile creatures. The last day's events were getting hazy, like I had a hangover. This really feels like the morning after a heavy drinking party. Yesterday's natural, flawless, absolutely normal conduct becomes a nightmare in the morning. A grotesque illustration from the Divine Comedy. Yes, it's just like that, and I can't change the past now. Then again. I had probably assessed the situation and was acting accordingly. I glanced around, trying to figure out whether I had been thrown out somewhere else, but Olga Dmitrievna's cabin looked the same as yesterday. Everything seemed to be in its place, except for a pioneer uniform which was hanging from the bedhead. I fumbled with it in distrust and tried it on. At least this is better than walking around in winter clothes. I wish I could see myself, but I looked like a clown, and for that I needed a mirror. At least a tiny one. I finally found one on the wardrobe door. Holy! I looked at the newfound pioneer and jumped away in surprise. There was some teenager on the other side of the mirror. He resembled me, but he wasn't me. Where did the weak stubble go? Where were the bags under my eyes? The slouch? That deathly fatigue on my face? It seemed that I had been thrown back in time or into a parallel reality, but instead, sim but instead had simply changed bodies with someone else. Right, that's real simple. Such things happen every day. I took a closer look at this strange, at this stranger, and only, uh, and only then I realized that it was actually me. It just wasn't today's me. Maybe the one from between my school and university years. Well, at least that's something. There you go. The person in an extreme situation did fail to notice the elephant in the room after all. But the camp leader noticed it, and last night she told me off for her for addressing her without proper respect. Ah, screw that. I doubt my appearance affects anything else. If the clock was not lying, breakfast was long over. Ah, oh well, I'll try to find something in the canteen. It worked out well yesterday with Slavia, didn't it? Those memories made me smile involuntarily. Alright guys, we're gonna end it there. Uh, this one at least felt like a shorter uh, session. 
but I am genuinely super tired. Last night was, it was a late night for sure. So yeah, that's uh, where I'm gonna where I'm gonna end it off. If you guys enjoyed the video, that'd be awesome if you could leave a thumbs up on it. Uh, and if you're new around here, you like what you see, and you want to see more of this game, more games like it, then uh, why not consider subscribing or at least checking out some of the other videos on the channel. Uh, I have, I believe, one other series up. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Don't. Rain on me.